Geometry on a motorcycle is a bit of a puzzle. And, you know, there are people who are experts in that. You've only got to look at MotoGP and all of the high-level racing to understand that they have race engineers there who understand a lot about geometry and the way that it affects the steering of the motorcycle and the way it handles from a stability perspective. So what I want to do in this video is just run a little experiment, basically, to understand the effect of one particular thing, and that is changes to swing arm length. What I've got here is a 2015-2016 S1000RR BMW and anyone who knows you know, what we do on this channel will know that we've really spent a lot of time playing around with the suspension and the geometry of this particular motorcycle. And one of the things that we did when we finalised on the geometry that we would apply when we're taking the bike on racetracks like Phillip Island or Eastern Creek or things like that, um, we settled on some numbers and that affected the trail and the rake of the bike the height of the bike and the length of the bike. Now, swing arm length is the thing that I want to play with a little bit here because we'd gone down the pathway of extending the swing arm, making the bike lower and longer, and it's incredibly stable. But on the local ranges here, it's fairly tight and twisty and there's flip-flops back and forth. So what I want to do is I want to shorten the swing arm by changing the gear ratios here, or the sprockets basically, and then go and run the experiment of testing it. What does it feel like now that we've shortened the swing arm? Because I now know what it feels like with the longer swing arm and uh, I just want to you know, check the difference between the two. Now, the ratios on these particular bikes, and that's, that's the, the relationship between the rear sprocket and the front sprocket. Uh, in stock form, uh, they have a 17 tooth front sprocket and a 45 tooth rear sprocket. So that's a, you know, for the technical buffs out there, that's a ratio of 2.647, which means for every 2.647 turns of the front sprocket, you get one turn of the rear sprocket. Now, what we had gone to was a 1544. So we've gone from, effectively from the stock one, 1745, to a 1544. So if you think about that, the front sprocket has two teeth less, and the rear sprocket has one teeth, one tooth less. So it's much, much smaller in comparison to each other. And that changed the ratio to 2.933. So that means for every 2.93 rotations of the front sprocket, the rear wheel will do one rotation. Now, incredible drive, and as I said, quite stable, because what that does with the small sprockets is lengthens the swing arm. And the swing arm, uh, the swing arm measurement from the center of the pivot point where the swing arm attaches to the frame to the center of the rear axle now is 605 millimeters with that particular chain. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert it. I'm going to put a one tooth bigger sprocket on the front. I'm going to put a 16 on the front and then I'm going to put a two teeth bigger on the rear, which is a 46 tooth rear sprocket that we'd run in the past. So that 16 to 46 would give us a ratio of 2.875. So it's very close to what we've got. However, that has got to move the rear wheel forward. And uh, I'm just going to check out what that feels like. So uh, that's it. That's the experiment. Okay, we've finished the work, we've replaced the front and rear sprockets, we've tensioned the chain and we've tightened all the nuts and bolts up. And basically when we measure now the, different, the distance between the centre of the pivot point for the uh, swing arm on the frame and the centre of the rear axle, we find that the rear wheel has moved forward approximately 15 millimetres. So we end up with a shorter swing arm by 15 mil. And the overall length of the bike, if you go from axle to axle, is 15 millimetres shorter. So what that's going to mean, it's going to be if you think about it, a little, little less stable under acceleration and braking because it's actually a shorter motorcycle, but it should affect the turning in some way. It should be a quicker turning bike. And uh, the only thing that we need to do now is just go for a ride and get a feel for this on the local ranges.
Okay, I've ridden the bike in the configuration we talked about earlier in the video, and that is with the configuration we had just with the shorter swing arm. And we made that shortening by changing the sprockets on the bike. So we had, in essence, had bigger sprockets without really affecting the ratios of the gearing too much. Now, the experiment got a bit of a legs of its own, and I went down the rabbit hole of throwing in another variable. The variable we threw in was the height at the rear measured at the axle. And I wanted to do that because while I'm pulling this apart and taking it for a ride, I wanted to compare the feel of the four different scenarios. Shorter swing arm with two different heights, and then longer swing arm with two different heights. We were able to do that by just simply changing the rear wheel. So what we've got here is a 260 Pirelli. The 260 Pirelli gives you an 8mm lift measured at the centre of the axle to the ground over and above the 200 by 55 profile tyre. So there's an 8mm lift at the rear end. Now, of the four configurations, the, the interesting part about it was the one I disliked the most uh, of all four different situations with the shorter swing arm and the 200 by 60 profile tyre. So it kind of felt unstable, it was quick to turn because it wanted to steer, but had the least feeling of stability, particularly on the slower corners. And then as we increase speed a little bit on the ranges, the front end in, on some situations felt like it wanted to tuck a little bit. And I didn't like the feel of that particular situation, that configuration. The configuration I like the most of all of them is definitely with the longer swing arm. The bike feels more stable and it doesn't seem to compromise the turning ability of the motorcycle. So we get more trail, hence there's gonna be more stability. Yet the amazing thing, it is not a one-to-one -one ratio with the turning. The thing still turns perfectly. Of the two scenarios with the longer swing arm, I preferred on the range the 200 by 55 tire. So that situation is basically, this bike is now turned into a long, low bike, which is exactly how, you know, my buddy Ian described it to me on how you would want to set up this particular series of motorcycles in the BMW range. But the one that I like on the, on the racetrack, which is where I've run it in Townsville, is with the longer swing arm and the 200 by 60 profile tire. The, you still get that stability on the edge because as you, as you roll over the edge, you're getting closer to the same height at the rear end. But you get, with a 60 profile, you get a big contact patch towards the edge. And the other thing about it is it's more suitable to the type of turning you're doing on a racetrack. You're steering a lot quicker, um, you know, and it seems to be more responsive than I would need on the road. On the road, we're not gonna turn as quickly and nor are we going to lean the bike as much or we shouldn't be on, on local you know open roads and ranges so the 255 tire with the longer swing arm for me was perfect for the ranges 260 with the longer swing arm was perfect for the racetrack so there you go you know that's my opinion only um i just judged it on the basis of how the bike felt and uh you know it's up to you to make your own mind up on that so hope you get something out of that and i'll see you in another video bye